hello I'm just burning some incense um, don't mind the funny voice I just uh, I've been enjoying it I, I like to be honest a small thing about me like about the truth about me is that I really like um, putting on funny accents and, uh, not really actually I feel like when I talk like this it's truer to my like my core being like yes this was like <laughs> yes I was raised a certain way and um, you know um, and I developed certain accents but a certain accent Australian I suppose um, and whatever else is amalgamated into the accent that I have but there's one particular voice that I actually put on and <laughs> whoa. I was running in English for a second. Um, there's one particular accent that I actually put on, um, or that actually like takes me over. Uh, that I actually feel like was an accent that belonged to me from a past life. Uh, I, I'm not sure how to explain it, but just when I when I speak in that way, and it happens, uh, uh, I suppose after certain experiences that I have, this accent sort of takes over on the come down of um, such a rush that I've had from such a good experience. But yeah, so, oh, I'm back to my sort of normal self. Uh, but yeah, like, uh, people have sort of like uh, said things to me about the fact that I do just put on an accent sometimes and I, it just comes out especially in front of a camera I used to put on a really American accent all right I am um, yes I'm getting slightly sidetracked uh, but yeah I actually came to talk to you about uh, dimensional beings I'm not sure if I'm not sure what dimension uh, these beings sort of uh, are from I I would say like off the top of my head I say that they are fifth dimensional beings but I'm gonna quickly uh, Google uh, other people's interpretations of what dimension would render certain beings uh, tangible to humans you know what Let's not even say what dimension they're actually in. Let's just, oh, let's fix that. Let's just say that they're dimensional beings. We'll, we'll say that they're residing within a, another dimension rather than a specific dimension. Uh, I thought it was the fifth dimension, but uh, actually checking myself, I'm not certain what that dimension would hold. I don't know if uh, those of you who are watching uh, have much knowledge about dimensions uh, for a while when someone would say that there are extra dimensional beings, I'd nod and say yes, but my understanding of what dimensions were were actually quite, was actually quite little. Um, the, first, the first dimension, for instance, is uh, a point, a single point. So um, before I get into that, I'll, I will explain it with uh, with this or with a book. Okay, so this book has dimensions. It has length. It has height, depending on which way you put it. Hey guys. And it has width. So this way. Guys. I'm gonna have to come back. All right, my cats are fighting. This book has different dimensions to it. It has length, it has height, it has depth, and it has width. So, uh, my part time has been. Wow, that's three. That's three dimensions. So there are various discussions about where these other dimensions actually lie, and what they can see, oh, and what they um. Are made up of and uh, yeah so um, if we have were to add another dimension to things the dimension would have to be uh, well as a third dimensional being uh, it is said that we are unable to conceive what a an, a higher dimension would be but I don't necessarily believe this like there are times where like my perception 
has sort of been expanded and I've been able to perceive certain uh, concepts but not being able to apply uh, definitive language to those concepts but there was there was definite understanding of something beyond what I'm supposed to know and a person has has said that like a person has uh, said that it, it that this is the length of our uh, capabilities, but I don't necessarily believe that. So, and various people talk about it. So, uh, the fourth dimension would be beyond... N I'm not sure if, if we were to go to the next dimension, if it was just one other instance like like how there's length and then there's width and then there's height perhaps the next dimension would be being able to perceive more uh, color uh, more <laughs> see the language is escaping me because you know um, more hues and and shapes more Like a shadow, if if you were to if you you were to see uh, when you see a shadow, you know that there's there's something there. Um, this shadow of uh, fumes, for instance, if you can see the shadow of fumes, but you can't necessarily see fumes. So uh, perhaps the fourth dimension, uh, those fumes that just sort of seem liquidy as they go in the air, could be more solid. There could be more definition to like like physical definition like what you can see to these instances and smell perhaps you would be able to see smell and then going further maybe uh, adding another dimension to those somewhat invisible phenomenons in our everyday lives perhaps adding another dimension would add texture to that now visible s smell. <laughs> I'm kind of just like, like talking to myself here. But yeah. <laughs> I had a glass of wine earlier because I've been learning a bit about witchcraft. And uh, <laughs> I've been particularly interested in uh, communicating with extra dimensional beings, which it, to some can be like a kind of frightening uh, concept and it was terribly frightening for me at some point like I, I remember that being my my worst fear fears lived within a dimension that I that I couldn't see and that's because like human humans play on those sort of things and I, th I believe that like unpracticed these things can be can be scary but but within myself I knew that I had to take time with certain things. Like I told my, like I made myself forget certain things because I didn't want to face it. But the more I learn and the more patient I am, like if I get into a conversation with someone and it's a conversation that I know I'm not ready for, I'll just walk away. And there's no, like, there, that is something that is so humble for you to do. Like if you know that you can't handle a certain conversation and like, but for instance, if it's in your house, I believe it's if it's in your house, you can instantly like ask this conversation to be ended. Uh, if they're your friends, perhaps you can say that you're not ready for it. But if it's a situation, perhaps you're not, you don't feel privy to say those things, then walk away. And it shouldn't matter. That shouldn't matter. Um, anyone who would say anything about that is not in their right. So yeah, like be involved in what you can handle, and take things step by step. I, uh, for a long time, only allowed myself to be exposed to lighter aspects of uh, more dimensions. Um, I exposed myself to the more visual aspects of uh, being able to step further into more dimensions. Uh, and then it became... Uh, I, I could hear more than what I was supposed to be able to heal and then smell more and then taste more 
I still don't have a definitive reason as to why um, or how these instances occurred. There were certain influences that definitely helped me reach that point uh, and taking things like that really slowly really like at your own pace. There is no point in delving into any sorts of medicines of any type if you're not going to be able to remember it the next day and for some experiences particularly the more lucid sort of experiences you're not going to be able to remember everything dreams are hard to remember and you didn't <laughs> waste yourself um, to get yourself into the dream state but uh, take it slow sometimes and it can be absolutely so fun to go your hardest but when there's something that you want to remember one take notes and two take it easy it's worth it it is so worth it to take it slowly sometimes but yeah so I was drinking wine uh, like I have been uh, more recently getting in contact with entities and trying to get into contact with entities for a while I was only in contact with tulpas and uh, tulpas are mind manifested uh, entities so uh, for instance I would be watching certain shows like in particular Adventure Time I think I believe that Adventure Time is loaded with psychic resonance and psychic resonance is basically when you create something for the intent of certain information to be uh, conveyed and received so I could be making a video right now and I could be thinking of particular people for this video to reach and at this point in time I'm not I'm making it for the sake of whoever is watching it but yeah for particular people uh, to see and sometimes we have future and past memories I believe and there have been times where I feel like I'm watching someone particularly a vlogger and someone somewhere within their being okay so in string theory uh, the tenth dimension in the tenth dimension all time is happening at once everything on every timeline different parallel universes they all come back to the one dot which is apparently the first dimension it is like the flower of life of the first dimension so the first dimension is just a dot like everything is crammed into this one dot whereas the tenth dimension is like <laughs> not just our dot but on top of that dot are different parallel universes and with oh, and not even that like all time exists within this dot so you now and you tomorrow it's all crammed into the one space so I don't know if you've ever been in a uh, situation where you were perhaps hallucinating and you saw something you were looking at something and it was changing or a person's face was aging or something like that I've been watching where I've been watching a vlog and uh, or coming to the understanding that the person who is making this or the person that I've communicated to somewhere within them and within uh, the grasp of their higher self they have awareness that all time is existing at once and they have access to all timelines and, and they know that they have met me before and I know that I have met them before. So there is somewhere within like perhaps me right here in the third dimension doesn't know that but because I have done, opened up and tried to learn these things that I have the conscious thought that somewhere like our higher selves know each other and we know what our purpose is and we know why we're, we're communicating. Maybe you are looking for help. <laughs> Maybe you're looking for someone to understand. And watching shows like Adventure Time 
I felt that like <laughs> Adventure Time is the most beautiful show and I don't feel like it's just for kids it's for people it is <laughs> it's so simple yet loaded with so much stuff there's even mention of the the, the molecule or the chemical dimethyltryptamine which is apparently the chemical responsible for our ability to be able to dream I don't know if many of you have dived deep before, but there's something about dreaming that is absolutely magical. Yeah. So, I felt like at some point, in some place, whoever was making that show knew that I was gonna watch this particular part in the show. <laughs> at a particular time, maybe not a particular time, but man, I got this feeling it took over. It was like, it was like this entity, unlike a ghost or anything like that, which is a different topic, and I'll get onto that. It was like this entity that was sort of created out of all of the, like a mixture of all of the creators of the show and, and the intention of the show and the beings that the higher selves of them that knew that I was going to watch it and whoever else was going to watch it came out of the screen <laughs> and was just talking to me and it wasn't talking in a way that was with words it was talking in a way that every single time a character spoke in the show it was resonating with me so hard as if Finn and Jake and whoever else were literally talking to me like they may as well have been saying my name and I've had experiences with vloggers like this. Ralph Smart. I I don't know if you meant for me to see this. Like, I feel like I was. I feel like at some point you did, and you knew that I was gonna watch it. Like, maybe you had these experiences with various other fans, but I feel like a part of you, Ralph Smart, <laughs> knows us individually. Because we are these infinite beings with infinite capacity and infinite amounts like, of <laughs> almost tendrils that can reach each other. Right now I'm wondering how many people I'm sending out messages and maybe they won't even watch this video but they're getting the vibration of me making it and it's affecting them. <laughs> yeah. So, I sage my house to speak with the entities. Well, not even, like, um, so a glass of wine, we're back on this, a glass of wine will apparently, uh, what will it do? What will it do? Oh yeah, so it will weaken your aura. Well, I, I, I don't really want to say weaken because people use it with the intention to do what I'm going to tell you it supposedly does uh, thins your aura in a sense so we have this aura that protects us and earlier when I was saying that I wasn't ready for certain instances it was and uh, and I wanted to keep those instances out I protected my aura I didn't take certain medicines and foods and whatnot because I knew that they were going to thin my aura and I wasn't ready for certain things to communicate with me. I didn't want it. And to be honest, I wasn't strong enough at the time to actually keep myself safe in those realms. And that is entirely important. That's why I'm burning the sage right now. Um, but yeah, like you must be brave and confident to truly be able to dive deep into these things and be aware. There are many times when, <laughs> along my early journey, there are many times when I have um, stupefied myself. Um, I've been completely inebriated. And inebriation can be intelligent and it can be intentional for certain purposes, for certain reasons, different kinds of ine inebriation, for different sorts of spells basically. It's a ritual. But yeah, um, there have been instances where things have been gotten way too much and I've just stupefied myself on certain types of alcohol, which is completely dangerous. Um, it is sort of said um, communally, um, collectively, that um, getting 
blackout drunk will actually render you completely helpless to possession, pretty much. And possession is quite simple. Um, it doesn't, like, it can be good, if anything. Um, there have been times where I felt like a conduit for quite, conduit for quite positive energies. And some not so good, and it's, it's easy to tell um, after a while when it's actually happening. And sometimes it's not even, it's, it's not even entities that are, are possessing you, it can it be another person in the room, and they might not even be aware of what they're doing. Um, in which case, eat garlic? <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, no, I won't tell you about that. It was just an experience I had, like, out in the town, where lots of drunk people are, and lots of people that aren't aware of the extra realms. Um, so, yeah. People's energy can very much possess you, in a sense. So you must be careful. Keep yourself pure. I have salt. I have a salt bar. It's like a bar of soap, but it's salt. Because I don't have a bath anymore, and I used to take shaman's baths all the time, which... Um, salt purifies you energetically, and I, I'm still trying to find the connection between food and the spirit world. I know that eating... I'm a vegan. Uh, I know that eating uh, fruit and vegetables, uh, they have lots of life in them, and meat has life as well, so I'm still trying to work that out, because meat, when, you, when you've cut it, it has enzymes and things in it, but energetically, I think meat is a little bit more dangerous because um, the suffering that the animal went through, whereas uh, it is more commonly believed that uh, Plants have intelligence, but they don't have emotion. Collectively, I think that nature operates as a sort of single uh, organism. No, that's... But then you could also include humans within that. But... I still haven't sort of learnt to tell the difference. I still don't even know if veganism is quite the thing for all humans to do, to be honest, and that's not because of my own personal dietary uh, thoughts, like I will always be vegan because I want to be vegan and I love, I love animals, though I'm not quite certain that it is the definitive choice for mankind. I believe myself to be a Vega starseed <laughs> uh, and we don't eat animals. It's, it just... I'm not sure. I see too much intelligence. Too much... Oh, I don't know if fruit has intelligence. I see too much in animals that I can communicate with and I, I couldn't even hurt a person, to be honest. Like, no, that's not true. I could defend myself. Anyway, I have to get off the topic of veganism. It makes me feel so much, especially in regards to how I feel others could be but it's not my con it's not my business right now um, somebody has to <laughs> I'm sorry uh, I gotta get off veganism but yeah so alcohol dims the aura it thins the aura it makes it easier for certain creatures to visit yeah <laughs> keep your house pure <laughs> I made a video on this um, I made a video about light work, but yeah, your space is uh, very important in regards to uh, entities and angels and demons and, and things like that. Um, to be respected by the spirit world, um, you must present yourself. There are rituals that you can do to intentionally visit them. Or uh, I'm a bit more loose with it. Um, I burn my sage. I don't particularly... Uh, do a sort of strict ritual. My ritual is more or less just behaving, being respectful, knowing, trying to know when there is an entity around that wants to communicate or just wants to be around. And sometimes they do. Uh, but yeah. Some of them just 
want to know, like us to know that we're there. They're there. <laughs> they want to know us to know that they're there. But yeah, this helps with that, and that is why there are rituals done. But yeah. There is a certain level that you can go with alcohol in particular. But yeah, you want to play play it safe. And I'm still learning as I go. Oh, tobacco is also a, another shaman sort of substance. Uh, yeah, there's a special type of uh, tobacco that shamans use, but they burn tobacco to purify the the area, to purify the space, which is interesting. And apparently, during an ayahuasca retreat, this is my tobacco pipe. Uh, during an ayahuasca retreat, oh, the accent came again. Uh, you will, like, some of them will do a coffee and tobacco sort of cleanse. You'll know, drink it and purge. But I'm still needing to do more research on that. But yeah, anyway, I am Neo. Also known as Cyber Shaman on Instagram. And I'm really excited for you guys to jump on board with what I have planned because I am you and we are one have a good night